Hey guys, in this video today we're going to be focusing on making foliage and sort of like ground vegetation in Blender. In this video we'll start off by making what I call leaf planes and then we'll use those basically to make trees and ground foliage and bushes. So let's get into it. Alright guys, so to start things off what we can do is delete everything and I'm going to change the background color to just a white color for the beginning here. What we can do immediately after that is add a plane. And what this plane is going to be used for, it's going to be used to make our leaves. So we're going to add a new material to it and add a simple transparency effect. And before that, I'm going to switch the color to green. And then I'm going to hit add effect and you'll see it turns all transparent. But we can go into this simple transparency effect. And if we go to the masking feature, we can create a new mask for it. And you can call it whatever you want and set whatever image resolution you want. I used 2048 here, but I think 1024 was probably like more than enough. So you can slide enable mask after that and you also want to slide invert so that when we draw with the mask it's going to add the color rather than subtract it. So you can go to texture paint mode after that and you can use whatever brush you want and basically just start drawing with white which is going to make wherever you draw no longer transparent pretty much. And what you want to do is you want to basically just draw some leaf shapes. That's pretty much all we're doing here. Just draw some simple leaf shapes. And I also set the base color to a brighter color because when I originally did this that was the color that I decided upon. After that, what you can do is you can add a stylized light dynamic effect, which is going to allow us to basically have lighting on this model when we add a sun. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the blend style to linear instead of step linear, because linear is just like regular CG lighting that isn't tune shaded, and we don't really want the leaves to be tune shaded here. We want it to have a nice blend between the light and dark values. So what you can do after that is you can go into edit mode and basically just duplicate around this plane that you made and rotate it a bit. And what this is going to do is going to give us a kind of cluster that we can use to basically scatter on our tree. Really quickly guys, I should say you should have the sapling tree gen add-on enabled. You can find it if you go to edit preferences and go to extensions and type in sapling tree gen and just click the install button. It's completely free and it comes with Blender. So now what you can do after that is pretty much hit shift A, go to curve and add a sapling tree gen. And what this is going to do is going to give us our tree. You can go to the leaves tab and you can click the show leaves button and what you want to do is check the show leaves button and set the leaf shape to dupla faces and the leaf object should be the name of whatever you named your plane that we just made to. So mine was called leaves plane. And set the leaves count to whatever you want. Understand though that the more that you use, the more it's going to lag your computer. You can also go to the armature tab and hit use armature and go to the animation tab. And you can give it an animation as well by just checking the boxes there. So yeah, this is the quote unquote simple way to do it. It's not going to look as good as if you do the more computer heavy version that we're about to do soon. But this works if you just want some basic foliage. You can also go into edit mode on your plane and you can scale it up if you want the leaves to be bigger on the tree. You'll notice now that with our sun we have some light and shadow on our tree and you just want to play around with the settings on the stylized light dynamic effect to get it how you want. So you can see there I increased the light value by a lot so that there's much more contrast and you can play around with the hue saturation as well. And yeah, make sure you light your tree at like an angle that looks nice because that matters a lot as well. I also wanted the shadow to be a more like bluish green type of color so I set it to be that and then I slid the colorized shadow influence slider. Now what you can do after that is you can add an object randomization effect and what that'll let you do is add some variation to each leaf on the tree. So you can see what I did here was I set the value min and the value max to be pretty far apart from each other and what that does is basically is it assigns a random value to each leaf so that some of them will be brighter and some of them will be darker. Same with the hue and saturation you can play around with those as well and it'll just give your tree a nicer amount of variety. Okay, so that's a quick way to make like the basic foliage. It doesn't look amazing, but it can get the job done. So now let's make the more high quality version. So what you can do to make the more high quality version is you can add an icosphere. You can rename it to whatever you want. And what you wanna do is you wanna add a new particle system to it, and you can switch it from emitter to hair. Set the number down to something low, like four or five. And for render, you wanna set the render object to be that cluster that we made previously. There's three of them here. You can ignore the other two. I just, I don't know why I duplicated them, but basically just use that object we had before as the instance object and you can play around with the scaling of it and obviously what this is basically doing is it's just scattering those leaf clusters around our icosphere now for the sphere itself you can set the material to be the leaf if you want and you can see that'll make it mostly transparent although to be honest what i'd recommend is just add a simple transparency effect to the sphere and just make it like completely transparent because now the sphere has like a little bit of weird like neon greenness what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a sapling tree once again, and you can check on animation and armature like we did before. Now in the show leaves tab, 
what we want to do is we want to use this icosphere that we made as the leaf object. And now this is something that is going to definitely lag your computer a bit. So once again, I recommend just positioning it as you want and then hiding it so that your computer doesn't lag as much while you're working. So yeah, you can see we get something that looks a bit more appealing now. You'll have to play around with the settings a bit in the particle system for how big you want these leaf objects to be and also the number of them. Obviously don't use like too high of a number because that'll just completely lag things. Keep in mind, you can go into texture paint mode again on your leaf plane and make adjustments and it's going to update on the tree, which is pretty cool. So you can see, I just kind of drew with a low strength onto my model and what that does is it kind of gives the tree this sort of like painterly effect because now there's a bit of like almost transparent but not completely transparent paint on it. So that's just like one cool thing you can do and you can play around with. Obviously you can draw as many leaves as you want on the plane and it'll update on your tree model itself. So that's pretty cool. And it just lets you easily make adjustments. Keep in mind you can hide the plane at the bottom of the tree whenever you want. So you can see I just hit it there with the H key and now you can just see your tree only. So that's pretty cool. And over here what you can see is I just duplicated the tree around and just positioned them a bit more. And you can see it allows us to really quickly make a cool looking scene with our trees. And as you can see here, once again, I'm playing with the texture paint on the leaf plane that we made. And yeah, for those of you who have the add-on, obviously you can get the file on the download page. All right guys, so now I wanna show you how you can basically just add some falling leaves. So you can see here, I have a very basic shape that I just made and we can use this as our leaf and we can add a plane. And you can position that plane like over the tree or wherever you want at first. So basically you want to add a particle system and lower the number. You can play around with the velocity in the velocity tab if you want it to shoot out faster at first. Okay, so what you want to do now is hit Alt-H to go back to your particle system plane that we made. And you want to disable wind on the particle system. So set wind to zero. And so when you set wind to zero, just hide that plane again so that we don't have to see it. And you can add a force field wind object. And what that's going to do is basically allow us to have some wind pushing these leaves falling down. The reason why we had to set wind to zero on that plane was because otherwise the wind would affect the leaves on our trees as well, which we don't really want over here. So yeah, so you can just go and increase the strength in the panel for the wind. You can see now it's pushing it a lot harder. Now what you want to do is you want to basically just go down to where it says damp in this particle system and you can increase the damp value. And what that's going to do, it's going to make the leaves fall way slower. So now you have something that's just a lot nicer looking. So yeah, that's basically how you would add falling leaves. You can also add transparency to your plane that's actually shooting the leaves so that it can't be seen. Okay, so now switching back to the three tree setup we had before. For the material for the leaf object itself, you can just make it the same as the leaf plane that we made before, except the only difference is you want to get rid of the symbol transparency effect because we don't need that on this leaf object that's going to be falling in the wind. And yeah. Also off camera, I changed the background color to be more of like a dark blue because I just think it looks a bit cool. One additional thing you can do is you'll notice with trees, oftentimes as they go further in the distance, they get this atmospheric effect on them where they become more bluer in color. So one thing you can do to kind of emulate that is you can add a sphere gradient to your leaf texture and you'll get this empty, which you can move around and you can scale it up. And basically if you position this over a tree, we can set the color of the gradient to be like a sort of grayish color or gray blue. And when you move it in towards the tree, you'll see it starts to appear there. So I'm gonna change it to like a higher value. And you can see now we get that sphere there. So what we can do is switch it to linear instead of step linear. And now you can move the gradient so that it's on top of the tree and it gives us this kind of atmospheric effect. Play around with the visibility as well to get it to look the way you like. So that's that. Now the next thing I want to talk about is how we can make bushes and ground vegetation in general. So what we can do is add an icosphere, scale it out on the x-axis a bit so it becomes more of an oval. Go to the particle systems tab, create a new particle system, switch it to hair, decrease the number a lot, set the render as to be object, and you can select your leaf plane object that we made before, and then play around with the scale. We can go to render view then, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the sun and the bush and just hit slash on my keyboard to go into local view, or you could have just deleted the trees, it's up to you. But basically now we have this bush coming together and you can increase the number of leaf planes on it. Add a simple transparency effect to your sphere object so that the sphere itself becomes transparent and now we only have the leaves. You can add a displace modifier to the sphere object and click new to create a new texture. Go to the the textures tab set it to clouds and you can see now we have a displacement of that clouds texture that we just made make sure the displace modifier is on top of the particle system so if it's not just drag it go into edit mode after that and just start duplicating around the sphere pretty much you'll notice the amount of leaves we had got thinned out so you can increase the number again in the particle system you can play around with the size of the clouds image texture as well to get a look that you like now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add an empty i added a cube empty there and what we want to do is switch the coordinates of the displace modifier to be this empty 
empty that we just created. So now you'll see when we move the empty, it kind of animates it a bit. And this is one way you can animate your bushes, but we'll talk about another better method later. For now, we're just using this empty to displace our bush. You can increase the strength of displace modifier and you'll see now we get something that looks pretty cool and more bush-like. You can duplicate around your bush object with the shift D and I'm doing that in object mode, by the way, not edit mode. You can also adjust your sunlight. And yeah, so you start to get these bushes or grass objects starting to form. And you can see here, I'm moving around the empty and as you can see, it changes the kind of like seed of the displacement. What I'm going to do after that is I'm going to apply the displace modifier and we're going to make the ground vegetation first. So to make the ground vegetation, let's apply the displace modifier on our objects first. You can hover over the modifier and hit control A to apply them. You can go into edit mode on any of these and if you see any area you don't like, you can simply just start like moving it around a bit. And once again, make sure you really get that lighting on point because it's very important. I'm also going to duplicate around some of these vegetation bushes a bit more. In my case here, I'm just kind of making like a random patch in the middle of our scene so it's nothing complicated, but you might want to give it more thought depending on the type of scene you're trying to make. So now I'm going to show you guys the proper way to animate these leaves. So we're going to hit Shift A, go to Force Field, and add a Turbulence. So you can see this doesn't do anything initially, but if we increase the strength a lot, I'm going to set mine to like 33. You can see if we move this Turbulence, it actually animates the leaves of the system we have here. And the reason why is because those leaf objects are part of a particle system, and Force Fields in Blender will target basically everything that's part of a particle system. You can also increase the size variable in the Turbulence object, and I like to do that a lot as well. So what I'm going to do is keyframe where I want the initial position of the turbulence to be. So I'm just going to put it somewhere and then hit the I key. Then I'm going to go forward in the timeline and then I'm going to move this turbulence object then hit the I key again. So you can see it now animates between those two points. We can select both of these keyframes and hit T linear on our timeline to make it linear interpolated instead of ease in, ease out. And we can hit Shift E linear extrapolation so that the animation will continue on forever, even after the second keyframe. So now when we move the second keyframe, we can make the animation faster or slower, depending on where its position is. In the end, I decided on a strength of 33 and a size of four for our turbulence object. So you can use this method to animate whether it's the vegetation or it's bushes. You can see here in this camera view, it looks more like they're just like bushes or something. Anyways, I hope that was helpful guys. Thanks for watching. You can get the add-on in the description or on my masterclass as well on ukiobros.io.